today what I plan to cover is basic concepts of OOPs. Right. Uh, what what is object oriented programming? Why does it really uh, come up as a new paradigm? Uh, where do we need object oriented programming and so on? The way I want to do that, I have found it to be comfortable for others in my previous courses is let's pull up paintbrush and uh, just draw a few diagrams if that is fine with you all. But while we engage in a discussion, you can view any of the diagrams. Okay, so let's start off now by understanding the concept of hoops. Right? Uh, what is object programming? What is a class? What is an object? And so on. So before even we uh, get into programming, right? So get into this aspect of uh, oops programming. Let's try to understand uh, uh, the concept of uh, what exactly a class or an object is. So if you look around, you have to. If you look around in the environment, you see so many objects around you, right? You see the laptop, you, you probably see a headphone, you see a chair, you see a table, you see a cupboard, a window, glass, everything. So think of all these things as actually objects. So everything is an object, right? I am an object, you are an object, what we are holding in our hand is an object, uh, what we are trying to tie to the hands is an object. Everything is an object in this world. So we have various kinds of uh, objects in this world, right? Now there are different types of objects, right? Uh, what do we mean by type? So, for example, what kind of an object is a laptop? It's 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 a it's an object of type an electronic item, right? Uh, what kind of object is a pen? It's, it's an object of type, maybe a stationary item. What kind of an object is, uh, let's say, a car? It's, it's an object of type an automobile, right? So when we are talking of objects, what we are actually talking of is an instance of a class. And what is the class here? The automobile is the class. The electronic item is a class, and the stationary item is a class, and so on. So that is a simple way of understanding what a class is and what is an object. A class is basically an abstract representation. When you say a stationary item, it's a class, but you really don't know what kind of stationary item, what, what is the actual instance of a stationary item that you're referring to. Is it a pen? Is it a pencil? Is it a writing pad? Is it a notebook? Is it a diary? You don't know what it is. So if I tell you what instance of a stationary item I'm referring to, that is when I refer to that particular item as an object of class stationary item. So let's try to understand another example to make this clear. Let's consider the class automobile. Right? It's just an abstract representation. So when you're saying automobile as a class, what could be uh, an object of of type automobile? You could it could be car. What else could be an object of class automobile? Bus. Uh, it could be a train. It could be a bicycle. It could be a tricycle, and so on. So I hope this is uh, a lot clearer now. Class is basically an abstract representation, and the object is the actual instance of a class. It's the, when we say that something is an object which is an instance of another class, we are referring to a specific instance of that particular class. And the class could be anything and the object could be anything. Now when we are, so we, we have a question here. So Ram is basically um, asking as to what, what is a, an abstract representation. So basically what we mean by abstract representation is we are not clear as to what is the actual entity that we are referring to in the world. So when I say that I'm referring to an automobile, there are so many kinds of automobiles, each of them having various kinds of characteristics and attributes. We are not yet clear as to what 
automobile you are talking about. And so that becomes a class. When I say the term stationary item, yes, still we are completely not clear as to what is the actual entity that is a stationary item we are referring to. We are not clear whether we are talking about pencil, we are talking about pen, we are talking about a uh, ball pen or whether we are talking about an ink pen or whatever. So when we say stationary item or an automobile, we are completely, or furniture, we are completely not clear as to what is it that we are really referring to and therefore that becomes an abstract. Is that clear wrong? I hope that is uh, not clear enough. Okay, great. So uh, now we've kind of uh, tried to get a thought around what exactly do we mean when we say a class and what exactly do we mean when we say an object. So a class may be represented as uh, an object can be represented as an instance of type class and that is how class and objects are related. And we have also gone through examples of uh, given a class there could be several objects that could be instances of this class. They are real entities in this form which we refer to when we say objects. Now what is it so, what is so important to have uh, about an object? Right? When we say a pencil is it just sufficient if we say pencil is of type stationary item? Wouldn't we want to know how long is the pencil? How thick is the pencil? What's the kind of lead it's made up of? What is the pencil's color? What is its strength and everything? What are, what are those things that we are really referring to here? We are actually referring to what is known as the attributes of the object. Right? So basically what is an attribute? What are the attributes that we all have? That uh, we would like to specify whenever we refer to an object which is a type person. We may be referring to a man, we may be referring to a woman. What is it that we really refer to? Can can you guys uh, give examples of attributes of type person? So think of an entity which is a type person. Think about yourself. If you're a man, if you're a woman, if you're a child, what kind of attributes can you think of? Just like how we thought of attributes for the pencil, which is an entity of type, class, stationary item. We are talking about a man or a woman or a child who will also have attributes which clearly define its existence in the world. So height is an attribute, complexion is an attribute. What else? What else are real attributes. So when you think of attributes, think of them as those that really define its characteristic, which when said will clearly say what is it that you are really referring to. Height, complexion, what else? Weight maybe, right? Weight is a uniquely defining characteristic. Everyone of us has a unique weight associated to others. What else? Hair color. Right? So many of these uh, attributes that uniquely define. Right? And what else? Nationality. What's the main thing? Age. Right? We'd like to know about the age of person. So does representing age, nationality, hair color, weight, height and complexion sufficient? Do you, do you think you need something else? Try to think of it from a designer's perspective. Right? When you're referring to someone, what attributes of his or her do you think we should mention to be able to uniquely refer to that object? and say, if I mention these attributes, they should be able to say, hey, he is the object or she is the object you're referring to. Some kind of a unique identification number, right? So maybe the passport number, the social security number, or some other kind of identifier. It will probably help you identify the particular object. So all these uh, characteristics of the objects that we are talking of are in the programming world referred to as uh, attributes. So when you say attributes of an object, this is what we are talking about. Like what are the attributes of the object? Now it's important to note 
that when we actually define the class, we we also define uh, the attributes. So let me just uh, draw a small diagram here. So This is the class name, right? So let's say the class name is person. What are the attributes? We said age, height. And so on. Right. So when we define a class, it's important to mention the name of the class, number one, and all the attributes of that particular class. So that when we are creating an entity, when we are creating an instance of this class, or in other words, when we are creating an object of this class, it's important to associate the object with values for all these attributes. Now the values could be of different types, right? So when you are creating an object of type person, that means you are actually creating an instance of type person. What kind of value would you associate with the attribute age? Would it be a number? Would it be a string? It will basically be a number, right? Age is basically numeral. And what about height and weight? They are also numbers. And what about hair color? That would probably be a string wherein you mention the color. And that string could probably come from a fixed list of colors that you probably have in your dictionary. From black, white, gray, brown, or whatever. And what about passport number? That would also be a string, right? So each attribute value that is associated with any of the objects, which is a type person or any other class will have uh, this kind of attributes. Okay. We'll have these attributes that are there which are associated with the corresponding class. So now I hope uh, the concept, the high level idea of what a class is and what an object is is clear. Uh, let's uh, check if any of you have any doubts about it. For those who already have background in hoops and who knows the concept of class and object might kind of find this a bit boring and repetitive, but uh, we have to understand these concepts in detail so that all of us are on the same page. If you have any doubt, please feel free to type in the chat window. Uh, we can take it up immediately. Do not wait until the end. Uh, if you want to ask, you can just unmute yourself. Just ask the question. Does anyone have any doubt about this thought process? This has to be very clear, right? So this has to be very clear about what a class is and what an object is. Where does object fit in here? So Nathan, what do you exactly mean when you ask that question as to where does object fit in here? So you want to really know in the concept of map producing Java, where does actually the concept of class and object fit in? If that's a question, then uh, that will be clear when we actually write a sample Java program. And then we will see how objects are created and how we execute it. When we actually write in a program, maybe uh, that will be clear for you as to how we create an object and how we define a class in Java. Any other question about what exactly is an object, what is a class, and so on? 
So let's try to understand the motivation behind uh, this. Right? Why did people really come out with this kind of model? Why has it become so popular? Why has object-oriented programming become so popular? And uh, why is it that people are writing new and new languages that embody the concept of object-oriented programming? We have C++, we have Java, we have so many object-oriented concepts in other kind of scripting such as uh, Python, Perl, and so on. So why, why do you think, let, let me put this question back to you. Why do you think this kind of a model was required? If, why, why do you think C was not sufficient for people even though it had all the required operations? Of, writing software, talking to the hardware, doing all kinds of things with various kinds of while loop, if statements, if else, which, and everything. Why do you think we people require this kind of model? What was the real motivation behind modeling uh, programs on the lines of classes and objects? Those who have already got a background in Oops can also maybe pitch in. Uh, since you guys have already learned this uh, the program. Maybe you can say what is the main motivation behind having an object oriented model for a program. When you look at this model, right, of thinking of the world as classes and objects, uh, what's the main motivation behind it? What is what is the biggest strength here? Reusability, fantastic. Reusability is a very good point. We can always uh, reuse maybe the templates that are created for the class. Someone else can pick it up and start creating their own instances. They don't have to really spend time defining what a person is. You can reuse uh, the same class that someone else has written. That's a very good point. What else? When we get into the concept of uh, inheritance later in this course, it will be a lot more clearer as to what that means. But uh, besides that, there are many basic things that really motivate one to think of an object-oriented model, right? So just think about it. Take a while, take a minute or two, think about it, and just jot down your points here. 